My name is Michael and this is Use Vim. Today we are going to talk about the Vim Help menu. So at this point I'm going to assume that you've gone through some sort of basic ramp up with Vim and you can navigate around a little bit. Uh, perhaps you've done the Vim Tutor. Uh, if you don't know how to find or get to the Vim Tutor you can check out my Vim Tutor video. Um, but at this point I'm assuming that you were uh, past the basic stage and you want to now learn more or maybe there's one thing that you're trying to figure out how to do and you don't want to Google it, you want to see if it's uh, something you can find yourself. So that's what the help menu is for. You can see on the Vim loading page uh, how to get to it, so we're just going to do that. Help and then hit enter. What happens is the documentation is loaded right here after you type help in a separate window above your the file that you're editing. If you don't see any colors, try typing syntax enable and you will get a little bit more definition in the documentation uh, that might help you to start to realize what's going on as we progress. And then if you don't like operating in this split window, you can type only and isolate the window that your, current cur your cursor currently is in to be the only window on the screen. So here we are, right in the documentation, just read it and you'll know everything. You'll, you'll know more than I do. Uh, that's not what this video is about. What I'm going to show you here is a couple of things that uh, you might want to know that might be, not be so obvious or uh, just a few shortcuts that might help you get started with this uh, a little bit faster than you know reading the entire documentation. So the first major point is discussed here in the this second major stanza of the documentation. These tags or bars or hyperlinks built in the documentation that you can begin to navigate through with control right bracket and then control O. So let's just do that. Let's just follow this one. So control right bracket and I'm going to go down and so you see that it's jumped to bars and control O and we're back to where we were. So let me show you this in a little bit more detail. Uh, clever tricks. We won't do clever tricks right now. I'll leave that to uh, you to investigate later. But we'll go to user manual 23 here. And then maybe 23.3. And let's see if we can find something else to jump to. Oh, we're going to go a ways here in this one. Oh, user manual 24. Okay, fine. And we're in user manual 24. So what we've done here actually is we built up a jumps list. And then we can use control O to go back to the beginning of our list. If we want to go forward through the jump list we built, we can use control I, which is right next to O on the QWERTY keyboard. So back and forth through this jump list. And we can't go further than um, the latest entry in our jump list, so if you want to go somewhere else, uh, control right bracket it again, and now your jump list will be updated. So help jumps. How about help jump? Oh, there it is, jump list. So ju you can see right here, jumps are remembered in jump list with control O and control I. You can cycle through them. Uh, this is just how you navigate around through the jump file. So, okay, what what's the point? Is this just you know, more overhead for Vim? <laughs> is this useful at all, or am I just, you know, making my life more complex? Oh, even the documentation has some weird shortcuts uh, if I need to use it, right? Well, not exactly. So, what's actually happening here is you're jumping through these things uh, that Vim, call, Vim calls tags. I mean, they're like hyperlinks on the internet, but what a tags file is, is it's um, an index that's built up before, uh, for certain file types or, or pre-built pre into, uh, before you start the editor. 
and then you can navigate or search through this index. So that's useful because you can do the same thing for file types that you care about or projects that you care about. You can use a program called ctags or other tags programs to build up an index of a code base before you start editing the code base and then navigate to, through and jump to function definitions, parameter definitions across files and um, speed up the your navigation through the through this code base. So while you're learning and practicing this uh, the, these keyboard these hotkeys in the documentation, you can then apply it to uh, other work you do with the editor. Uh, same thing, by the way, these tags, this tag index, allows you to search uh, for a string after the help menu or after the help command below. So if we do like help Windows, we're searching for the through the tag index for anything that matches Windows. Let's try tabs tabs here too. So it's a way to search the index. Okay, great. Well, I can search the index, but what if I don't know what I'm searching for, right? This is, if I just type help um, Path, for example, it will jump to Python, but it won't. Um, this might not necessarily be what I want. What if I want Python 3 or, or something else? Well, there's another way to search, a full text search, just like uh, grep on the command line and you just type help grep and then whatever you're searching for. So let's search for something like complete. And you can see that I got 514 hits for a full text search of complete. Uh, the way you proceed now is all the results are populated in the quick fix window, which in this default instance I'm running for the purpose of these demos, uh, does not automatically get l created. That window doesn't get created. So if we want to open the quick fix window, we can type C open. And here is a list of all of the results of your search. You can then hit enter and it will jump to that portion of the documentation. And then to navigate between the quick fix window and the documentation window, just use the Windows hotkeys. If you're not familiar with those, you can check out my Windows and Tabs tutorial or just start reading about Windows in the documentation itself. Okay, so if we want to close the Windows, the Quick Fix window, we just type C close. So C open to open Quick Fix, C close to close Quick Fix. Next form of searching that I want to show you, uh, let me just exit out of this here. So again, I'm in a no configuration mode of Vim. Uh, so to set up the editor with the defaults for Vim, it says right here in the landing page, just set no compat for the defaults. Uh, the option I want to show you, the only setting is uh, the wild menu, which is a search completion using the wild, so-called wild key, which by default is tab. So what does this look like? Well, if I now type uh, some sort of string and hit tab, it will populate a little status bar here with all the results from the tag index that I can shift tab to go back and tab to go forward cycle through and then jump to that portion of the documentation. So help window, win for example, wind, how about wind? Yeah, window, syntax enable to turn on the color that I love. So hopefully you get the point here. This setting for the wild menu is another form of searching that could be useful to help you find something that you might be looking for in the documentation. And then the final thing I'm going to show you is some command line 
tricks that you can do to navigate the documentation as well. So when you use the C command line flag, it will execute whatever Vim command is between the quotes once the editor itself starts. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do this, which should start launch Vim, uh, enter the command help, help, and then this delimiter here is a delimiter between commands, so it will do two commands here. So we'll do help, help, and then uh, isolate the window, and then we want to make sure to do the you none here as well. So it opens it up. Okay, close to what I want, but not exactly. Let's add some syntax highlighting as well. So now we've got three commands that get launched when Vim launches. Great, so I'm jumping right to the documentation string I'm searching for. Let's extend this a little bit and turn it into a function. I'm using bash here. So we'll do the same thing except for we will just read in a command line parameter this time. Syntax enable. And I missed a semicolon. So now we'll just do vim help and then how about Python. And now we have a command line vim help documentation searcher. So Windows.